subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button good evening and welcome to south asia news line amle pak shikurana Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 14th of January. India reports over 264,000 new COVID-19 cases amid Omicron driven surge. Pakistan passes IMF backed mini budget despite opposition protest. And Sri Lanka prison chief gets death penalty for 2012 massacre. Now for all the details, India reported 264,202 new cases of coronavirus in the last 24 hours, taking its total tally to 36.58 million on Friday. Several big cities, including Western Mumbai and capital New Delhi, are witnessing a huge spike in cases of the new Omicron variant. Health experts have expressed concerns that complacency and defying of COVID-19 protocols could lead to an overwhelmed healthcare system. India reported 264,202 new cases of the coronavirus in the last 24 hours, taking its total tally to 36.58 million on Friday. Several states including Maharashtra, West Bengal and capital New Delhi are witnessing a huge spike in cases, but markets and public places have continued to be flooded with heavy crowds as economic activities have not been restricted as part of fresh protocols. Though hospitalizations are low amid the Omicron driven surge, health experts have expressed concerns that complacency and defying of COVID-19 protocols could lead to an overwhelmed healthcare system. Way it is going on, I think it's a tough time for all of us. And you know, even if the patients are not too many of uh, them are admitted, but your health healthcare system still gets stretched. So many of our colleagues, our healthcare workers including the doctors, nurses, they get uh, infected. and once they get infected they have to be quarantined or isolated for at least 7 days so the rest of the workers there so much of pressure on them meanwhile around 200 teenager monks and nuns got vaccinated against covid-19 in india's northern hill town of dharmshala on friday indian government recently allowed vaccination of children aged 15 to 18 years in the country against the deadly virus to widen its coverage of the immunization And a death toll in a train accident in Jalpaiguri in India's West Bengal state climbed to at least nine on Friday. Officials said as the rescue operations continued. India's railway minister Ashwini Vaishno said preliminary inquiry has shown there was a glitch in the locomotive equipment, and further probe is underway. The death toll in passenger train derailment incident in eastern India state of West Bengal climbed to at least 9 on Friday after more fatalities were reported by officials. Seven coaches of the Bikaner Guwahati passenger train derailed near Moinaguri railway station in West Bengal's Jalpaiguri district on Thursday. Rescue operations continued at the derailment site with the help of cranes to find survivors till the last reports came in. At least 36 people were admitted to hospital with injuries, railway officials said. We तक जो है यहाँ पर rescue operation almost complete है. दो bogey में हम लोग देख पा रहे हैं दो दो करके लोग वहाँ पे trapped हैं. उसमें वो लोग उसकी अवस्था ऐसी है कि बिना crane से उसको उठाए उसको वो लोग remove नहीं कर पाएंगे. तो NDRF के लोग उसमें काम कर रहे हैं. थोड़ा time और लगेगा उसमें. Meanwhile, India's railway minister Ashwini Vaishnav, who reached the site, said that preliminary inquiries showed that there was a glitch in the locomotive equipment, and further probe is underway. Preliminary, ये पता चल रहा है कि locomotive के एक equipment में issue आया है. वो issue किस कारण से आया है? उसको dismantle करेंगे, खोलेंगे, तब जाके पता चलेगा उसका root cause. The ministry expressed condolences to the families of the deceased and nearly 6744 US dollars as ex grusha and 1348 US dollars to those previously injured. 
And news from Pakistan. Pakistan's parliament passed the controversial mini-budget on Thursday that will end exemptions on sales tax as part of fiscal tightening measures for the revival of a stalled $6 billion IMF funding program. This came despite protests by opposition lawmakers who said the supplementary budget will trigger a new wave of inflation. Pakistan's parliament passed a mid-year budget on Thursday that will end exemptions on sales tax as part of fiscal tightening and a law to grant its central bank greater autonomy for the revival of a stalled $6 billion international monetary fund or IMF funding program. Ending the tax exemptions would raise 343 billion rupees, Finance Minister Shokat Tareen said. The passage came despite protests by opposition lawmakers who said the supplementary budget will trigger a new wave of inflation, which already stands at 12.3 percent, which Tareen rejected. Opposition leader Shehbaz Sharif termed it as a black day and said people are already reeling under a historic price hike. The IMF approval is crucial for the South Asian country of 220 million, which is struggling with external and current account deficits, a depreciating currency, struggling foreign reserves and rising inflation. Islamabad will also be raising fuel prices over the next several months under the IMF conditions. The IMF board was due to meet on January 12 to approve the tranche, but Pakistan had requested a delay until Islamabad met the IMF conditions. And more on news from Pakistan. Pakistan's coronavirus positivity ratio jumped over 7% on Friday after more than 3,500 new cases were reported, the highest since last September. The South Asian nation has ramped up inoculations and has been administering booster doses to those above 30 years of age to protect citizens from any impact. Pakistan's coronavirus positivity ratio jumped over 7% as the country reported 3,567 new cases, the highest since September 10, 2021. In the last 24 hours, the National Command and Operations Center reported on Friday. With the new infections, the overall tally has risen to 1.315 million, while seven more deaths have taken the dead toll to 28,999. Meanwhile, Federal Education Minister Shafkat Mahmood was also tested positive for COVID-19 on Thursday. In a bid to curb the surging cases of Omicron variant, authorities have ramped up inoculations. Pakistan's largest city, Karachi, earlier this week launched a door-to-door -door campaign to vaccinate women who were lagging behind men in rates of coronavirus inoculation. About 70 million people in Pakistan or 32 percent of the population have had two vaccine doses. The federal government has acknowledged that a fifth pandemic has started in the country but not yet announced new restrictions. And moving on, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres has appealed for a suspension of rules preventing the use of money in Afghanistan to save lives and the economy and for a path to the conditional release of frozen Afghan foreign currency reserves. He also appealed the Taliban leaders to recognize and protect fundamental human rights of women and girls in Afghanistan. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres appealed on Thursday for a suspension of rules preventing the use of money in Afghanistan to save lives and economy and for a path to the conditional release of frozen Afghan foreign currency reserves. Describing a nightmare unfolding in Afghanistan, Guterres warned that the world is in a race against time to help the Afghan people and stress that freezing temperatures and frozen assets are the lethal combination for the Afghan people. He also appealed the Taliban leaders to recognize and protect fundamental human rights, in particular of women and girls. Without creative, flexible and constructive engagement by the international community, Afghanistan's economic situation will only worsen. Despair and extremism will grow. We need to act now to prevent economic and social collapse and find ways to prevent further suffering for millions of Afghans.
Some 9.5 million dollars in Afghan central bank reserves remain blocked outside the country, mainly in the U.S. and international support given to the previous government has dried up since the Taliban seized the power last August. The U.N. on Tuesday appealed for 4.4 billion dollar in humanitarian aid for Afghanistan in 2022. And in news from Sri Lanka, a Sri Lankan court this week sentenced former Prisons Commissioner Emil Lamaheva to death over the killing of 27 inmates in an execution-style massacre in 2012. It was the worst prison violence in the island nation since a 1983 jail riot. Sri Lanka's Colombo High Court this week convicted former Prisons Commissioner Emil Ranjan Lamaheva and sentenced him to death over the killing of 27 inmates in an execution-style massacre in 2012. The top official was indicted in July 2019 for the killings at Sri Lanka's main Velikada prison in Colombo. Reports suggest police commandos were used to put down a riot at the prison and disarm inmates who had allegedly taken weapons from the armory. Weapons were later introduced to make it look like the victims had tried to fire at jail guards. Some of the inmates killed were being held over robberies at Sri Lanka's National Museum and a temple. The targeted killings triggered international condemnation of the then government of President Mahinda Rajapaksa, who is now the country's prime minister. It was the worst prison violence in the island nation since 50 inmates were hacked to death in a July 1983 riot. And thousands of Hindu devotees across India took holy dips in River Ganges at offered prayers to mark the harvest festival of Makar Sankranti on Friday, despite surging coronavirus cases. Makar Sankranti, which coincides with the Bihu festival in the northeastern state of Assam state, heralds the coming of spring. Hundreds of thousands of Hindu worshippers gathered on the bank of the River Ganges in India on Friday for a holy dip and offered prayers to celebrate the Makar Sankranti festival despite an exponential COVID-19 surge. In the most populous state of Uttar Pradesh, devotees thronged the banks of the river in holy Varanasi city and prayed to Sun God. The festival is observed annually in Hindu month of Mark that falls in January. It also heralds the coming of the spring. Similar scenes we witnessed in India's West Bengal state where a large number of devotees took a dip in the sacred river and also prayed at the famous temple near Ganga Sagar. West Bengal state has been reporting the most number of COVID-19 cases in the country after Maharashtra state in the West. आज का दिन जो गंगा अस्नान करके कपिल मुनि का दर्शन करते हैं और गंगा अस्नान करके गौदान करते हैं उसका बहुत ही पुण्य फल प्राप्त होता है Meanwhile in India's northeastern state of Assam locals burn meji and perform traditional dance to celebrate Mark Bihu that coincides with Makar Sankranti The festival marks the end of the harvesting season in the region and witnesses grand feasting it showcases India's diversity in culture and tradition. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India reports over 264,000 new COVID-19 cases amid Omicron-driven surge. Pakistan passes IMF-backed mini-budget despite opposition protest. And Sri Lanka prison chief gets death penalty for 2012 massacre. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.